My name is Lorna Dawson and I'm going to talk to you today about soil within science, society and sustainability. As part of your studies in higher geography, you will need to be able to recognise and know the main characteristics of three British soils. Brown earths, podzols and glaze. Brown earths, sometimes referred to as brown soils or brown forest soils, have a number of characteristics that will help you to identify them. Brown earths are free draining, they are brown or reddish brown in colour and they are often found in areas of deciduous woodland. The litter is rich in nutrients and there is often intense biological activity for example, through earthworm movement. Brown earths have a mull humus, a porous, crumbly humus which rapidly decomposes and quickly becomes well mixed into the mineral soil, so that distinct layers, horizons, are not apparent. Bacteria, earthworms and larger insects are abundant in brown earth soils. This slide shows a picture of a typical brown earth soil. The AH topsoil in the soil profile is usually relatively thin, but it does vary in depth. It is enriched with mull humus. The B horizon or subsoil has distinctive bright colours of brown or red-brown and the colour tends to lighten as you move down the soil profile, generally as the organic matter and iron content decreases with depth. The sea horizon is relatively unaltered parent material, which is usually brightly coloured or a colour inherited directly from the parent rock. There are six factors of soil formation and they have all impacted on the formation of brown earth soils. Firstly, the parent material is a variable soil texture and needs to be of sufficient depth and be permeable to permit free aeration. The climate needs to be relatively warm and dry and in Scotland their occurrence is restricted to the warmer, drier climates of eastern areas but they can also occur in sheltered highland glens at lower elevations. Under natural conditions, the soils would form under broadleaf woodland which promotes rapid decomposition of the plant residue and consequent recycling of plant nutrients. This rapid decomposition is helped by the intensive biological activity such as from earthworms. In addition, the deep roots of broadleaf trees allow for conditions of good drainage. Brown earths are normally found in low-lying areas because the climate needs to be warm to allow their formation to take place. This slide shows three pictures of organisms found living in brown earth soils. Organisms help to create a good and well aggregated, well aerated and fertile crumb structured soil, perfect for growing crops in. The bright picture in the top right shows a false colour scanning electron micrograph of a mixture of soil fungi and bacteria lying over the soil minerals. The picture on the left shows a thin section of soil with faecal material from an enchytrade worm. The enchytrade worms are smaller than earthworms and they live from eating soil fungi and bacteria. The final picture on this slide shows an earthworm in amongst the roots in the soil. Earthworms are incredibly important in soil mixing and as a result they often get called the ecosystem engineers. Given the deep nature of these brown earth soils and their free drainage and often high levels of natural fertility, brown soils are often cultivated. They are used extensively for agriculture, such as winter vegetables, although fertilisers are required to maintain sufficiently high nutrient levels if regularly cultivated. 
As they often occur on gently undulating terrain, they are often used for settlement and industry and sheltered sites suit growth of such deciduous trees. Why don't you test yourself about brown earth soils? Write down three characteristics of a brown earth. There are a number of aspects you should think of, such as colour, organic matter, organisms, drainage, climate and location. Draw a sketch profile of a brown earth soil, labelling the three main horizons with the correct letters. Go back to slide 4 to see if you're correct. The next slide has a draft answer for you to look at. The range of characteristics to choose to describe brown earth soils and their formation. First is climate, where precipitation slightly exceeds evaporation, giving downward leaching of the most soluble minerals. Where the evaporation exceeds precipitation, capillary action will occur. That's the upward movement of moisture. Often the aspect is south facing, which results in more sunlight and higher temperatures, which will increase the rate of decomposition. The vegetation is deciduous woodland, which provides a deep, deep litter. This is rapid decomposition due to the mild and warm climate. The trees have long roots, which penetrate deep into the soil, recycling nutrients and oxygen from lower horizons. The conditions greatly favour soil biota. Their abundance ensures the mixing of the soil, aerating it and making the horizons less distinct. The parent material of brown earths are often softer rocks, such as shale, which break down quicker due to more biological weathering from tree roots, producing thicker soils. The mixing of the soil the deep tree roots and weathering of the parent material creates good drainage, allowing any moisture to pass through easily. They tend to be found on gentler slopes, where there is less chance of soil erosion, thus creating thicker soil. We now move on to the second of the soil types we're finding out about, podzols. Podzol comes from two Russian words. The word pod means under and zola means ashes. This picture shows a typical environment where a podzol would be found. A Scots pine forest with heather moorland on a hill summit. Podzols are widespread throughout Scotland and are generally associated with acid parent material, giving acid soils. They are a leach soil. There is a distinctive light coloured horizon known as an alluvial horizon found immediately below the organic debris. The alluvial horizon is formed due to the loss of iron and or aluminium by leaching. The humus tends to be a more humus, which is well broken down with no recognisable plant remains which leads to a slower decomposition of the litter. I try to remember the humus type as being the type with an O in it, just like the O in podzol, the more humus. The acidic conditions of podzols, the low pH, deter many soil organisms and hence the clearly defined horizons that we can see. There's a brightly coloured zone where the iron or aluminium deposits have been washed out from the alluvial horizon. This horizon of deposition is known as the alluvial horizon and tends to lead to the formation of an iron pan and this can impede the drainage. Most podzols have a darker zone of organic matter deposition and a relatively unaltered sea horizon at a variable depth. Most podzols are free draining until the iron pan forms. 
This picture shows the upper part of a podzol profile, the A horizon. Note that the lower B and C horizons are not shown in this picture. The A horizon has four distinct layers to it. At the top is the litter, the fresh, annually supplied acidic plant material, which will decompose only slowly over time. The LF layer is partially decomposed organic debris. The H layer, or more humus, is well broken down organic material. Finally, within the A horizon, this soil has an E or alluvial horizon, bleached due to the washing out of the iron and or the aluminium oxides. And under the A horizon is a B horizon, which is an alluvial horizon with deposits of iron and aluminium oxide, as well as organic material. Many pods also have zones of induration, such as an iron pan, a solid layer of soil that is difficult to penetrate, impeding the drainage of the soil. What is podzolization? Podzolization is the process of soil formation, especially in cool, humid regions, where precipitation, i.e. rainfall, is greater than evaporation and in which the upper layers are leached of the iron and aluminium, which are then concentrated in the underlying horizons. Podzols are formed on acidic parent material such as granite or schists and under coniferous woodland with acidic litter, such as pine, spruce or heather moorland, where there's very little mixing by the soil organisms, causing an acidic more humus to be formed. And they are found generally on the slopes of upland areas where the rainfall is heavy and the drainage is good, at least until there is an iron pan. In terms of topography, climate and vegetation, a number of podzol subgroups have been identified in Scotland. These include peaty podzols, humus podzol and alpine podzols. Alpine podzols are shallow podzols found in areas of high altitude. Podzols are generally infertile and are physically limiting soils for production. They are principally used for forestry and recreation such as forestry plantations and grouse moors. In Scotland they can also be used for grass production and stock rearing of sheep and cattle. Where used for agriculture, the topsoil is often limed to decrease the acidity and raise the pH and artificially fertilised to increase the soil's nutrient status. However, continual fertilisation and liming are necessary to maintain adequate yields. Now test yourself a question about podzols. Describe and explain the processes involved in the formation of a podzol. The answer. Podzols are formed in cool, humid regions where rainfall is greater than evaporation and in which the upper layers are leached of iron and aluminium which are then concentrated in the underlying horizons. Podzols form on acidic paint material and under acidic litter, where there is little mixing by soil organisms, causing a more humus to be formed. They are found on the slopes of upland areas, where the rainfall is heavy and the drainage is good, at least until you reach the iron pan in the profile. The wetter climate means leaching of minerals in the podzols, such as aluminium and iron, are leached out of the A into the B horizon. The presence of an iron pan and density of the podzol creates poor drainage, which can then lead to the soil becoming waterlogged in the B horizon. If you were undertaking soil fieldwork and were studying this profile, 
What evidence is there to show that this soil is a puzzle? Answer. The soil profile shows clear distinct horizons with a grey coloured alluvial bleached horizon and deeper in the profile a darker alluvial horizon sometimes forming a hard iron pan. That layer is called an iron pan horizon. Test yourself again. List the different types of vegetation that may be associated with podzols. Answer. Acidic vegetation such as coniferous woodland, Sitka spruce or Scots pine for example, or heather moorland. Question. Explain why the A horizon in a podzol is ash grey in colour. Answer. Acidic plant material falling from coniferous trees above in addition to an acidic parent material from below with high rainfall conditions greater than evaporation leaches out or washes out the iron and or aluminium oxides. This leads to the formation of an alluvial horizon forming due to the loss of iron or aluminium making the colour grey in this part of the A horizon. The name clay soil comes from the Russian word clay. Glays are compact with bluish grey in colour due to the lack of oxygen, mostly caused by waterlogging. The picture in the slide taken on the west coast of Scotland shows a blanket bog community with peat deposits in the valley bottom with peaty glays on the wet heather moor elsewhere. Clay soils are characteristically poorly drained and they are either periodically or permanently waterlogged. Water takes up the pore space in that soil, so there is a lack of oxygen which results in anaerobic conditions. Clay soils can possess a grey or bluish grey colour right down to the subsoil. Where glaying is intermittent, orange-yellow mottling can occur. Horizons are generally rich in organic matter and they can integrate into peat deposits from a glay to a peaty glay to a peat. This slide shows the profile of a glay soil and in this example it's a peaty glay soil. The top horizon is an organic layer. The B horizon is a BG horizon the B horizon shows evidence of glaying, so it gets the G added. Note the presence of yellow-orange mottles, which means that the soil is not permanently waterlogged. There are periods when oxygen is available in the soil. The C horizon is a CG horizon. The C horizon shows evidence of glaying, so it gets the G added. There are six factors of soil formation and they've all impacted on the formation of glaze. Glaze are formed from variable parent material. They can be formed from coastal sands to glacial till. Glaze are formed in a relatively warm climate where precipitation is greater than evaporation and leaching will occur. The vegetation on glaze can be wetlands to wet moorlands and also peatlands. Many anaerobic loving organisms are found in glays. Glay soils are found in topography where the groundwater level is high and where an impermeable layer is present in the lower horizons. Glay soils in their natural state support wetland plant species and are used for rough grazing and forestry. The picture shows a wet pasture with rushes. When drained, the better glay soils can be used for agriculture, usually productive grassland for dairy or beef production. 
This picture shows mottling in a block of grey clay soil. The grey colours denote gradual depletion of iron because of reducing conditions. The rusty orange coloured mottles depict the zones enriched with ferric compounds within well aerated pathways such as old root channels or distinct pores sometimes pores being formed by the penetration of the roots as they go deeper in the soil. Question. Where in a landscape would you find a glay? Answer. Glays are mostly found on a valley bottom or on moorlands where the groundwater level is high. What does anaerobic mean? Answer. Anaerobic means there's a lack of oxygen in the soil. We now have some ideas to help you with your soil revision. You could draw out each of the three soil profiles you've studied for brown earth soils, podzols and glaze, with and without labels, for example on separate cards for each soil. Shade or highlight the soil characteristics in one colour and soil properties and processes in another. Make photocopies of the profile without labels and practice labelling it when you're revising. Write out some one word answer questions such as those on the following slides. Then you can test yourselves using past paper questions too. Test yourself 10 questions. What is the name of the zone that material moves out of in a podzol? The zone that material moves out of in a podzol is the alluvial horizon. What is the type of humus found in brown earth soils? The type of humus found in a brown earth soils is a mull humus. What is the term used for a downward movement of minerals in a soil caused by precipitation being greater than evaporation? The term used for the downward movement of minerals in a soil caused by precipitation being greater than evaporation is leaching. F refers to what in a soil profile? The F refers to the process of fermentation in a soil profile. The H in AH refers to what? The H in AH refers to humus and the process of humification in an A horizon of a soil. What is the type of vegetation found above a podzol? The type of vegetation found above a podzol is likely to be coniferous woodland pine, spruce for example, or heather moorland. What is the typical colour of the subsoil in a glay? The typical colours of a subsoil in a glay soil is blue or grey. In brown earth soils, the horizons are often indistinct due to the activity of what? In brown earth soils, the horizons are often indistinct due to biological activity and mixing such as by the earthworms in the soil. The acidic humus found in a podzol is known as what? The acidic humus material found in a podzol is the more humus. The iron pan in a podzol is a zone of what? The iron pan in a podzol is a zone of induration or hard pan and can lead to restricted water movement. We now have some past paper questions for you. The question slide is followed by an example answer. Now have some fun answering them and go back to the slides before and if you wish you can check what you think the answer should be. And above all remember to enjoy learning about soil science. It's such a fascinating subject. This is an SQA past paper question. Study reference diagram question six. 
which shows soil profiles for a podzol and a brown earth. Describe the different properties, horizons, colour, texture, drainage of the two soils shown and explain the differences in their formation. Podzols have clear distinct horizons, whereas brown earths do not. This is due to the high abundance of soil biota, for example the earthworms, and the long tree roots in the brown earths. Podzols have an ash grey colour in the A horizon and a reddish brown B horizon. This is because the wetter climate means more leaching of minerals in podzols, the aluminium and iron from the A to the B horizon. The dark brown colour in brown earths is due to the rich mull humus formed by the deciduous leaf litter. The rapid decomposition makes a thicker humus layer which is transferred down through the soil. Podzols have a sandy texture in the A horizon and a denser texture in the lower B horizon due to downward leaching. The parent material influences the texture in the B, C horizons. Generally weathered glacial or fluvial glacial material in the podzols makes up the lower texture, whereas the texture of a brown earth is much more aerated and porous. The parent material is soft rock, for example shale, which is much more easily weathered and transferred into the soil, making it finer. The iron pan and density of the podzol creates poor drainage which leads to the soil becoming waterlogged in the B horizon. The brown earth has good drainage as the horizons are well mixed, the texture is less dense and the climate is drier, meaning less precipitation. The permeable parent material allows the moisture to pass more freely. Next question. Look at the diagram, question 6, of a typical podzol soil profile. Explain the main processes and conditions involved in the formation of a podzol profile. Podzols are found in areas with a climate of low temperatures leading to slow decomposition. As precipitation is greater than evaporation, leaching can occur which is the downward movement of the aluminium and iron oxides. Alluvium, alluviation allows minerals to be washed out of the A horizon and alluviated in the B horizon, creating an ash grey A horizon and a red brown B horizon. The accumulation of iron and aluminium forms an iron pan between the A B horizon, which may impede the drainage, causing waterlogging. The vegetation is coniferous woodland, coniferous needles and cones producing acidic moor humus. The shallow roots of the trees result in limited nutrient recycling and a limited absorption of deep leached minerals. The cold, wet and acidic conditions are not favourable for soil biota, therefore limited mixing takes place leading to well-defined horizons. Podzols are also found on steep slopes and this encourages further leaching. The parent material is generally acidic granite or schist and the wet cold weather leads to slow physical weathering of the sea horizon. Look at the diagram, question 3, of a typical glay soil profile. Explain the main processes and conditions involved in the formation of a glay soil profile. The climate is cold and wet. Low temperatures lead to a slow rate of decomposition 
of leaf litter and organic matter. Precipitation is greater than evaporation, leading to leaching. This is the downward movement of moisture and minerals. Mosses, lichens and rushes are able to grow in the wet conditions and they produce limited leaf litter, which is acidic, creating a more humus. The plant roots are short and do not penetrate deeply, resulting in a limited recycling of minerals back to the vegetation. The drainage is poor. The soil has a blue-grey colour due to the anaerobic conditions, where there is a lack of oxygen in the soil. Anaerobic conditions means few organisms are living in the soil, unable to burrow and tunnel through the soil. The iron compounds are changed from red-brown to blue due to oxygen being extracted by soil microorganisms. Red mottling in small air pockets due to reoxygenation of the iron in the soil due to burrowing animals' soils drying out in the summer. The parent material is often impermeable clay. This impedes the drainage and causes water logging. Glaze are found on flat surfaces such as plateau moorlands or valley bottoms, which means that the water cannot easily drain away. Look at the diagram Q3 of a typical brown earth soil profile. Explain the main processes and conditions involved in the formation of a brown earth soil profile. The climate of precipitation slightly exceeding evaporation gives downward leaching of the most soluble minerals in this brown earth profile. Where the evaporation exceeds precipitation, capillary action will occur. This is the upward movement of moisture and often the aspect is south facing, which results in more sunlight and higher temperatures, which will increase the rate of decomposition. The vegetation is generally deciduous woodland, which provides much nutrient-rich litter. This is a rapid decomposition rate due to the mild and warm climate. The trees have long roots which penetrate deep into the soil, recycling the nutrients and getting oxygen to the lower horizons. The conditions greatly favour the soil biota. There are abundance, ensures the mixing of the soil aerating it and making the horizons less distinct. The parent material of brown earths are often softer rocks, such as shale, which break down quicker, also due to more biological weathering from tree roots, producing thicker soils. The mixing of the soil, the deep tree roots and the weathering of the parent material creates good drainage, allowing any moisture to pass through easily. The brown air soils tend to be found on gentler slopes and where there is less soil erosion, which creates thicker soil. Thank you for taking the time to learn about soils in Soil Science Society and Sustainability. <laughs>